Hello friends, Fujio here with my first Classic WoW video with the BlizzCon opening ceremonies and the Classic WoW demo coming in less than a week. I wanted to share an idea that I have about Classic WoW and maybe have it as a little bit of a prediction for something that I think that can get implemented relatively easily and will help really help increase the longevity of Classic WoW. And that is some sort of a ladder or seasonal system with some sort of server resets. I'm going to use the example from Diablo 2 and what they've done and try and apply that to WoW before I talk a little bit about how the math will apply and how I think we can have 9 to 10 month server resets for WoW and that will work. Diablo 2 is an action RPG that was first released by Blizzard in June 2000 to critical acclaim. Uh, expansion was released a uh, year following in 2001 and built upon the original success. A few years later, the player base shrunk, which is a natural occurrence for the life cycle of any game. And what Blizzard did was they implemented a ladder system. So ladder players would start at level 1 and would be unable to interact with non-ladder players, which encouraged more cooperation amongst the ladder community as players once again leveled up, beat bosses, and got fat loot. It also gave the opportunity for people to run races to max level or try and be the first person to beat a certain boss. The first season went live on October 28, 2003 and continued until the first server reset on July 7, 2004. That gave players roughly 8 months to level and gear up and run endgame bosses. When a season ends, ladder players keep all of their gear, all of their experience and gold, believe the ladder system, allowing a new season to begin with fresh level 1 players. This allows people who are invested into their characters to continue to play with them while also having the opportunity to start again fresh. This type of ladder or season system could easily be handled by WoW by having new servers released every 9 to 10 months, or simply by having characters transferred off of ladder servers back onto what we could refer to as legacy servers. One of the biggest benefits that I can see to having server resets is the ability to experience the progression through Classic WoW as a community and group the way that we did the first time. Now, this was recorded pre-BlizzCon, so all we know right now is that the game is going to be running on patch 1.12, Drums of War, which we can assume is going to mean we're going to have all the talents, abilities, and content from that patch, and on the surface, that sounds great. All of us players having access to as much content as possible is fantastic, but it means we're going to be missing out on some of the progression and exploration that we actually got in real classic WoW, as new content rolled out over time. WoW first went live on November 7, 2004 and had its first major content patch that same year in December 18th. At that point, the only raids available to players were Onyxia's Lair and Molten Core. Dire Maul wasn't added to the game until March 7th of 2005, with the first Battlegrounds, Warsong Gulch, and Ultrak Valley being added on June 7th of 2005. That is five months before Battlegrounds were in the game, and I won't get into the absolute majestic, glorious, and beautiful nature of Ultrak Valley at the time. That's going to have to be saved for another video. But suffice it to say that there was an absolute elegance to being able to join in battle in the same instance of Alterac Valley, sometimes for multiple days, for one faction was finally victorious. But back to the patches. The Zulgarub raid in Arathi Basin Battleground weren't added until patch 1.4 on September 13th, 2005. That patch was also kind of important because it fixed a bug that allowed the Shaman Wind Fury buff to potentially proc an infinite number of times, which resulted in hilarious, but sometimes frustrating to play against OTKs. Now, we can highlight a whole bunch of interesting content that was released over time, but I'm not sure how much value there would be in rolling out content, even at a much faster pace than originally, on our theoretical ladder servers. I could see a benefit in having the content for major patches being gated at one or two weeks to give the illusion of being on the original servers, and this would really only affect the most hardcore players who were able to level up immediately, while casual but still diligent players would reach max level in the time of a few months, when all of that content would already be available. On the other hand, I can also see the benefit of leaving the entire game open in the patch 1.12 state and simply allowing players to choose and discover everything that Classic WoW has to offer on their own. The one point I won't sit on the fence regarding patch selection is patch 1.9, the Gates of Anchorage. This patch was glorious and not only came with the AQ raid, but with a massive server-wide world event that included completing an epic quest line to restore the Scepter of the Shifting Sands, which allowed players to ring a gong that opened the Gates of AQ, along with the War Effort quests, which involved both factions gathering and turning in materials, including copper, tin, mithril bars, thick, medium, light leather, bandages and herbs of all types, Turn-ins needed to total into the tens and sometimes hundreds of thousands to be completed in a server, and this in some cases took months to complete. Factions would race to complete their quests first. Servers would race other servers to have theirs completed first. The event felt epic because at the time it was epic in size. 
Once the gates were opened, there was beautiful chaos. Huge AQ mobs spawned in Silithus, while some guilds tried to fight them off while battling server instability, while others just snuck into the raid. Other guilds simply fought other guilds. It was exactly what anyone could have wanted from a true world event, and missing that opportunity would bring shame upon the WoW community. Some of the numbers for the turning quests might need to be tuned for the number of active players during one of our given theoretical ladder seasons, but that should be a relatively easy calculation to make. Also, working with our theoretical ladder servers, imagine the first few seasons would have a very large player base, which would probably force multiple servers to exist, and therefore we would get to experience those AQ gate races again, server to server. Please don't just roll a patch 1.12 and skip everything that was amazing about 1.9. Now we should talk about the math involved in leveling in Classic WoW. The experience system in Classic WoW is relatively straightforward. If you kill a mob of the same level as you, you get a base amount of experience. If you kill a mob that is slightly higher level than you, you get slightly more experience. If the mob is lower, you get slightly less experience. Starting at level 1, if you kill a mob of the same level as yourself, you receive 50 experience. At level 2, killing a level 2 mob, you get 55 experience. At level 3, 60 experience. This progression is linear and continues all the way to level 59, where you are receiving 340 experience per kill. However, the amount of experience you need for each level increases much faster than your experience gains. For simplicity's sake, from now on when I talk about killing a mob, let's assume I'm referring to killing a mob of the same level. Briefly, how this works is that a level 1 character, killing only level 1 mobs, remember, will take 8 kills. For level 2 to level 3 is 16 kills. By the time you get to level 9, you're all the way up to 72 kills. At level 59, for your final level, it will take you 617 kills. That is a lot of grinding for anyone that is used to the current quest hand-holding AoE grind fest that is Modern WoW. Now, Classic WoW did have quests, but whenever you entered a new zone or went to a new town, you would very quickly be able to finish them and would resort to sometimes long grinding sessions to level up. For the rest of our math, let's ignore quests, but we will acknowledge that they do knock off a little bit of time from our total grind. Getting back to our kill counts, in order to level from 1 to 60, you will need a total of 16,342 kills. And from the earlier examples, we've learned that this number is actually very back-end heavy. The halfway point in leveling is when you are part of the way through level 45. You're actually only three quarters of the way leveled when you're over 90% of the way through 52. Those last levels take a long time and will often feel very slow, so it's good to remember that while the earlier levels come faster, your overall leveling progression takes a long time. Speaking of time, let's start adding up roughly how long this journey will take us. In Classic, we don't have the ability to AoE down mobs often, so let's assume that each mob is going to take roughly 3 or 4 abilities to kill. That's going to either take us 3 to 4 1.5 second casts, or 3 to 4 instant abilities, with then the 1.5 second global cooldown. This means that each mob will take us roughly 6 seconds to kill, and I realize this value might be a little bit quick actually. So then let's double our value to 12 seconds per kill, over the course of a multiple hour-long grind session to account for travel time between mobs, which is often significant, and eating between fights, which is necessary in Classic WoW. So if each kill takes 12 seconds and there are over 16,000 mobs, that's going to take 196,000 seconds, or just over 3,200 minutes, 54 hours, or two and a quarter days. Assuming a player is not going to no life it and grind non-stop to level 60 when Classic is released, let's lowball that a casual player will get 6 hours of game time per week, which allows someone to reach a maximum level in 9 weeks. Now, one point to note for Classic is that there's a lot of time that we didn't account for. Travel in Classic is slow, there are no flying mounts, no ground mounts until 40, and even then there are the slow ones. Every couple of levels you need to travel back to your class trainer in order to purchase new abilities or upgrade existing ones. Even if we round up our two and a quarter days estimate up to four days play to account for all of these other slower parts of WoW, and we keep our six hours of gameplay per week for a diligent but more casual player, they're going to reach level 60 in 16 weeks. Now tying this back to our theoretical ladder system, if we want the turnaround time to be nine to 10 months, that still leaves four to five months for players to get geared for raiding, start raiding through and pushing through endgame content, all while completing our AQ war effort, because remember we've added that back into the game now. So if nothing else, there's the math behind leveling in Classic WoW, in the rough outline for an idea that I think can help strengthen the sense of community within Classic WoW, and keep players interested and active for years to come. Some of these numbers might seem daunting at first, and I hope it doesn't scare anyone away, because the Classic WoW experience was one of discovery and exploration as much as anything else. 
We stepped into the world and got lost wandering and loved it because it was uncharted territory. And I hope this time around, it's as great as I remember for everyone to be able to enjoy. So, no matter what happens, whether Blizzard does have some sort of rolling seasonal ladder servers, let's remember that sometimes it really is as much about the journey as it is about the destination. I'll see you at level 60. Have a great day. Thank you.